my dear children, namaste and welcome to the next session of our brand new series, Biobytes in 15 Minutes. Well, I think it's wrong to call it brand new series now because it's been quite a while since we started this. But anyway, out of my excitement, I just ended up saying that. And today again, we are going to be discussing one topic which is relevant for CBSE class 9 children, permanent tissue. This is Ambika, your biology master teacher, right here on this amazing platform of Vedantu. Yes, guys, let me remind you that BioBytes is a series which is intended for those of you who are looking for a sort of quick revision um, either on the on the eve of your exam or uh, a day before your exam or even on the day of the exam, hopefully not on the day though, um, honestly speaking. But anyway, quick bites of revision is all that we aim at. Um, In-depth explanation videos, you will be able to find them in our main playlist. So check them out for complete details of each of these topics okay now let's always as always start with a positive quote if it costs you your peace it is way too expensive so remember to choose whatever you need in life very very wisely and children vedantu pro subscription is always aimed at giving you the best quality courses at pocket friendly prices so do not miss out on the opportunity that we have for you. So to know more about pro subscription, visit the link in the description box below as well as the pinned comment. And remember to apply the coupon code AMBPRO to avail the best benefits that we have on Vedantu Pro subscription. All right. So coming to permanent tissue. Uh, what exactly are permanent tissues? These are tissues which do not divide, right? So plant tissues basically can either be meristematic or they can be permanent as well. Um, meristematic tissues are those which constantly divide. Permanent tissues are actually those tissues which start off their life like meristematic tissues. Uh, they just continuously divide but at a point of uh, life, at a point of time, they decide, they decide to give up on the roles of division and stop dividing and take up some very very serious permanent role in the plant's life. That is when we call it a permanent tissue. Okay, of course, um, in general, that is what we say tissues which do not divide, but rather take up a particular permanent function in the plant's body. Um, well, for the time being, I would suggest, although you see a lot of complex names here, for the time being, forget about all that. We are coming to all of that. Let's start off very, very simple, one step at a time. Permanent tissue can either be simple, wherein it's made up of just one type or one kind of cell. Or it may be complex wherein it's made up of more than one type or one kind of cell. Literally simple complex. Okay. So this is the flow chart, the overview of the different kinds of permanent tissue. As I said, um, these are permanent tissues are those in which the cells do not divide. They may either be simple tissue which we also call ground tissue or complex tissue which we also call vascular tissue. Simple tissue may be either parenchyma, cholenchyma or sclerenchyma and complex permanent tissue may either be xylem or phloem. Okay, So always, always remember this. This is PCS and this is going to be XP. Whatever PCS and XP reminds you of, remember to bunch it into two and think of that particular comparison that comes to your head when you hear the abbreviations PCS and XP first. Okay, okay. starting with parenchyma. These are very, very simple, uh, literally simple permanent tissues which have thin and flexible walls and they carry out a lot of metabolic functions in the plant body including even photosynthesis. And they are also involved in storage of a lot of stuff like lipids, um, excess starch, uh, water and all of those. This is what parenchyma does. Very, very responsible acts, very motherly and all of that. Parenchyma. And yes, subtypes of parenchyma, we can also say parenchyma may specialize uh, to perform certain very, very specific roles. For example, chlorenchyma is a type of parenchyma tissue which contains chlorophyll and performs photosynthesis. Arenchyma is a type of parenchyma, especially what we find in aquatic plants like um, hydrilla, water hyacinth and all of that. Um, the advantage is that, as you can see here, they have got large air cavities which give buoyancy to the plants to help them float on the surface of water. 
Okay, so this is chlorine chyma, nearin chyma, subtypes of carin chyma. Now coming to the second one. Now PCS, I told you, right? PCS, P is done. We are in C right now. Um, wall thickenings, as you can see, it's it's very, very similar to parenchyma, but then the difference is that it's got thickenings in the cell wall. Parenchyma has got very thin walls. Here in cholenchyma, um, another unique thing is that thickenings in the walls are found only at the corners of cells, as you can see here. Only at the corners, uneven thickenings, basically. Uh, why so? Because um, cholenchyma helps in providing flexibility and rigidity to the plant body. You are able to bend the stem of a plant without breaking it because of the presence of cholenchyma. Alright, so this is what cholenchyma is and then coming to sclerenchyma. So P, C, S as I told you, simple permanent tissue. P is done parenchyma, C is done cholenchyma. Now we are in sclerenchyma. Sclerenchyma is made up of dead cells. Very, very important to remember. It makes the plants hard and stiff. Okay, it provides a lot of mechanical support. That is all about the sclerenchyma and as you can see here, very, very thick walled. Parenchyma thin, cholenchyma uh, unevenly thickened, sclerenchyma highly thickened, PCS. All right, now coming to complex permanent tissue. We are done with simple. Now coming to complex permanent tissue, which are xylem and phloem or XP as we have abbreviated them. So as I said, they are made up of more than one type of cell. Let's look at them one at a time together. We actually call them vascular tissues or the conductive tissues. They act like the circulatory system that we have in our body. Xylem and phloem in plants are equivalent to that. They help in the transport of substances across the plant body. Let us start with xylem. Xylem is mainly, mostly made up of dead cells with a lot of thick walls. Okay, It's got four major kinds of elements which are tracheids, xylem vessels, xylem parenchyma and xylem fibers. Tracheids, vessels, um, parenchyma and fibers. TVPF. Again, I leave it to you. If you have any interesting mnemonic or an analogy that comes to your mind when I say TVPF, please post it in the comment section right now. Okay, so that everyone will benefit from it. You never know. Now, um, as I said, it's made up of many different kinds of cells. It's got a parenchyma component to it, as you can see here. It stores food and helps in sideways conduction of water. What about the fibers? Fibers, as the name indicates, they are mainly supportive in function. But just remember this much. Xylem is involved in the transport of water and minerals in the plant body. Water plus minerals in the plant body. Okay, now minerals, when I say minerals, it's not the food uh, end result of photosynthesis, no. Uh, minerals are the dissolved minerals which come up uh, from the roots, through the roots along with the water taken in. Okay, now coming to the phloem. Now in phloem, one major difference is that mostly there are living cells except for the phloem fibers. Okay, so here you can say that it's made up of sieve tubes, companion cells, parenchyma and fibers. Sieve tubes here, companion cells, phloem parenchyma and phloem fibers. These are the different elements of phloem and the main function is to transport food. Okay, so always remember phloem transports bidirectionally whereas uh, this one, xylem transports unidirectionally, only in one direction from the roots upward whereas phloem from the leaves either upward or downward okay because food according to where food is required food delivery services have to happen so this is about phloem again scpf any mnemonic that comes to you please post in the comment section okay now xylem versus phloem this is a comparison between the two you can take a screenshot and keep it ready in handy for any quick reference all that you can see no end walls what are their functions i've already told you what they do and structurally what differences they have unidirectional and bidirectional and about living or non-living cells that make them up and here is the session in a bite size for you plants have two types of tissues meristematic and permanent meristematic tissues are fast dividing tissues permanent tissues do not divide 
but helps in various functions of the plant. We can categorize them as simple and complex. Simple would include PCS, parenchyma, cholenchyma, sclerenchyma. Complex would uh, we say that they form what we call the vascular bundle or the conducting tissues. They are made up of xylem and phloem XP. Okay, so that's about permanent tissues. My dear children, do remember uh, making a flow chart and remembering the analogies, um, whatever we have discussed in this and in the in-depth uh, sessions that we have done earlier will be very, very useful to remember all about permanent tissues. So if you have found this useful and if you have enjoyed this, please remember to click on the like button right now and share it with all your friends because as I always say, sharing is caring. So literally bite-sized videos will certainly benefit everyone and stay subscribed to our channel Vedantu 9th and 10th English because this is just one of the most innovative series we have come up with we will come up with more and more in the days to come so do not miss out on them subscribe that's the best solution and also you can follow me on my official Instagram page, Ambika underscore Vedantu, for a quick stress buster uh, and a lot of interesting posts that we keep putting up uh, on a regular basis. Okay, children, so until we meet again, stay home, stay happy, stay safe. And this is Ambika signing off. Bye-bye.